Hi nerds, and 0 ck here. I decided to change the intro to be less gender specific. We want everyone to enjoy our hobby. Deal with it. Today, we're going to build something from the junk box. A couple years ago, my dad dropped off a box of radios when his company was forced to go narrowband. I thanked him for rescuing them from the dumpster and pondered a few different uses. They are Motorola Radius SM50 low power UHF mobile rigs built for the business band. My first thought was to program them for the ham bands, but they only have two channels and that would have been of limited use to me. The idea of building a repeater popped into my head, but I was more seriously thinking about scavenging the finals and maybe some connectors. Then Alex decided he wanted a UHF repeater. In the years when the radios were sitting in an old boot box in my garage, I looked into what it would take to reprogram these rigs for the ham bands. Motorola radios all require a radio interface box or cable and some special software that doesn't really like modern computers. These specific rigs required some hex editing of the software to make them operate outside their original range and inside the 70 centimeter ham band. When Alex kicked the project into high gear, I also had to figure out how to make the repeater ID, Roger Beep, and assorted other stuff repeaters do. I found a bunch of different options using Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. I even found an option that would use the Echolink software itself. The easiest and cheapest solution presented itself as the Ham Gadget's Ideomatic. It seemed to do everything we wanted or needed for 40 bucks. One big thing about a repeater is that it transmits and receives at the same time. In fact, that's pretty much its whole job. But it does so within a very close bandwidth. On 2 meters it's 600 kilohertz and on 70 centimeters it's 5 megahertz. So I looked into solutions that didn't require big bulky duplexers. I did some math and figured that 10 feet of vertical separation between quarter wavelength antennas should give the isolation needed for a local 70 centimeter repeater without too much descents. Alex got a duplexer from a ham fest. So we calculated the power requirements of two radios, an ideomatic, and a fan. I hit the Cramazon Prime for a power supply, some fans, and power cable because I was out. And I found a switching supply that had good reviews for RF noise and did everything we needed. Alex ordered up the ideomatics and a programming cable, and we were on our way. I built the ideomatics because I'm faster and I love building kits. Alex programmed the radios because he has the ancient laptop that runs the DOS software these radios require. We plan to have these repeaters linked via Echolink, and we both did that in different ways. Alex had an easy digi interface laying around from a previous project, so he was able to use that for push to talk. I built a Vox circuit from a schematic I found online. Surprisingly, it was Alex's setup that didn't work on the first try. After fighting with it for a few lunch breaks, we discovered it was a minor programming error. Repeaters can tease your brain. It helps to draw pictures and diagram things. They listen on one frequency while talking on another, and the controller and computer both need to know when the receive radio squelch is open, and that's the core line. And if you want to key the whole system with a computer, you have to key the core line at the controller, or no one on the other on the Echolink side will hear anyone on the RF side. When it came to assembly, step one was cut a hole in the box. Step two was put my junk in that box. And step three was to make her flip the switch. Everything worked. I was able to chat with Alex using Echolink and an HT inside my house. But when I did a range test, everything fell apart. I couldn't get more than a few blocks away before my repeater was deaf as a post. So my split antenna math was off. Reality didn't match theory or some other demon had presented itself. I guess I'll need a duplexer eventually. For now, it sits as a node that is occasionally connected to Echolink. Alex's repeater, on the other hand, was a shining success. He left it on his home antenna for a couple weeks, and it was covering the town of Marshall pretty well. 
then the permission and parts for the move came in. He moved it to the emergency communications closet at our local hospital and connected it to a relatively high antenna with some gain. Now I can usually get into his repeater using a mobile rig at about 15 miles. So the terrain was the limiting factor here because Marshall is in a river valley. I know this is more of a story than an instruction book, but you'll never get a complete instruction book for a junk box project. Just do your research to figure out what others have done, don't be afraid to make mistakes, test as you go, and most of all, have fun. If it gets frustrating, just throw it on a shelf for a couple years until your friend sparks some motivation. Thanks for watching everybody, 7-3, and join the resistance.